Welcome to Mass with Bob. Today we're looking at uh, surface area and volume uh, of pyramids in particular today. So now the first thing is, uh, let's actually draw a pyramid. Okay, so how would we draw a pyramid? Well, let's actually just try and draw one. Here we go. Okay. Now, from the center, um, there's going to be... Uh, let's put the center Let's put the center up. Here we go. This is, that would be the actual perpendicular height of the... Okay, so this is, let's actually just label that uh, H1. That's actually the height of the pyramid we are actually drawing. So let's actually now just join up a few bits. Okay, to the vertex. Here we go. There's one coming down the front here. Oops, a bit off the side there. Okay, just let's leave it there. And there'll be one running down the back, which we can't actually see. Okay, so the first thing is... Um, how do we find the surface area of one of these? Now, um, as you can see, this is, uh, there's lots of triangular faces on pyramids, um, and there's the square well, base. It doesn't have to be square. It could be rectangular or triangular, or any, any shape for that matter, actually, for a pyramid. So we're going to assume uh, this one is actually uh, a square pyramid. So let's actually put some measurements in. Okay, so let's make this, uh, say, 20 centimetres, and this one 20 centimetres. So it's going to be... Um, Basically, a square-based pyramid uh, with a 20-centimeter uh, edge, if you like. Now, um, there are a lot of little problems that occur in pyramids, and that is that uh, you're not usually given the right measurement. So, for instance, we're going to actually put a slant height of, say, 30 centimeters in here. Okay. Now, what are we going to do with the 30 centimeters? We've got to actually, to find the uh, surface area, you know, we need to find the areas of the triangular faces. Well, luckily, in a square pyramid, they're all going to be the same, but you know, with a rectangular one, we have to be a little bit careful. We'll do one of those next, but let's actually have a quick look. Now, okay, so this is a, a square pyramid, so let's, um, okay. Now, what do we know? Well, let's actually put some things in that we do know. We do know that the height is in the center. Um, it's halfway between the edges, so if you like, uh, if I actually draw a line across here, okay, not terribly good, well, this is half, okay, that way. Okay, so um, okay, so that's one good thing to know. Uh, we can also use the fact that if we draw a diagonal in across this way, that's also a half as well. Okay, so we can actually use sometimes we can use that fact as well, and we're going to be uh, using that in a minute. But uh, so let's actually first of all let's draw in some right angle triangles because basically finding the the heights and things uh, of the particular triangular faces is based on Pythagoras. So uh, let's actually just put in, uh, okay, so first up, what do we need? Well, we need to know, okay, let's have a quick look here. So we're going to have a right angle in here. Okay, we, so that's the first, uh, well, piece we're going to find. Now, how are we going to find that? Well, um, let's have a quick look. Let's call that A. We know A is actually half of the diagonal. Uh, what is the diagonal's length? Uh, well, okay, there are right angles in the corners as well, across this way. So we can actually form a, uh, well, a triangle with sides 20, 20, and 2A, if you like. But A is going to be a half, okay, what would A be? A would be a one half, okay, it's the hypotenuse, uh, okay, uh, times the uh, square root of 20 squared plus 20 squared, okay. Uh, how, how do we get that? Uh, well, remember Pythagoras, the hypotenuse squared, um, basically, um, is in, in actually equal to what the, the sum of the squares of the two, two other sides. So, in fact, uh, uh, 20 squared plus 20 squared is equal to the h squared. So, a half of h uh, is going to be equal to uh, basically a half of 20 squared plus 20 squared. Now, uh, so, uh, in this case, uh, it's going to be what? half of the square root of uh, 400 plus 400 square root. Okay. So a, let's say a half of the, uh, the base of that diagonal is in fact half times the square root of 800. Now, how do we actually get h1 from that? Well, uh, again, we need to use that right angle um, triangle. Uh, so uh, let's have a look. Okay, so this is going to be now we're going to use this right angle triangle here now. Okay. Uh, you might remember before we used uh, 
this right angle triangle here. Okay, so we can see here we're using sort of combinations of right angle triangles. Okay, so what is H1? Let's try and find H1 now. Uh, let's take a quick look. So H1 is in this triangle here. Okay, so we know, um, let's have a look. Okay, uh, H1 squared plus A squared is equal to, okay, 30 squared. Now, um, or if you like, uh, H1, uh, H1 is actually equal to what the square root of, what, 30 squared, which is 900 minus A squared. Now, what's A squared? Well, A squared is, in fact, uh, let's have a look, a half of root 800 squared, so that's a quarter of 800, so it's, say, 200, so it's the square root of 900 minus 200. Now, um, I was just looking, uh, you could actually find a, you know, by making the whole diagonal 2a and say 2a squared is equal to 20 squared plus 20 squared. Uh, uh, but just actually, what is a squared? Well, we just hear a squared is equal to, I'll just write here, a half of the square root of 800, which you could simplify as well. Uh, okay, a right, squared is. So you can see here, a half squared is a quarter. The square root of 800 squared is just 800. And you can just see here, okay, that's just 200. So, uh, okay. So that's um, a squared. So you can see a squared is actually 200, right? So, uh, and uh, we just need to simplify this. So we end up getting h1 is actually equal to the square root of 700. Okay, so I'll actually just, uh, let's just write that on. Okay, so what is h1? h1 is equal to, okay, it's equal to the square root of, say, 700. So the perpendicular height uh, of the pyramid is the square root of 700, which we're going to need to find the volume. Now, the volume is, for all pyramids, it's a third of the area of the base times the perpendicular height, which we'll write down in a minute. But So we're on the way to try and get the surface area to start with. So we're going to need... Now, what else do we need? Well, really, the important thing we need is, in fact, uh, you might uh, be able to see, it's actually... I'll do it in green, coming down here. It's this length here. This is the length we need, actually, because... To find the, uh, as you know, the area of a triangle, we need uh, half the base times the perpendicular height, or if you like, base times height divided by two. We're then going to form a, another triangle. Now, the other triangle is going to be in here. Okay, so then there's going to be actually a right angle here. So we're now going to be looking at this triangle. Okay. Okay. So you can see we've got lots of triangles. That triangle. Uh, we we used this triangle before. This right angle triangle. And we also use this other right angle triangle here. So you can see we actually have lots of right angle triangles, and it can get a little bit confusing. So you just have to be careful uh, with what you're finding. Now, so at the moment, we've got H1 as root uh, 700. We actually need H2. Uh, it's basically is the important one here, H2. So we, we're eventually going to get H2. Now, H2, what do we need? Well, we know that... Uh, this uh, green length here uh, is in fact going to be a half of 20, so it's actually going to be 10. So this will be 10 here. H2, we don't know, but we do know H1. So we're now going to write out an expression for H2. What is H2? Well, from Pythagoras we know uh, H2, that's a second height squared, is equal to, that's a hypotenuse squared, is equal to some of the other two sides squared, and that is H1 squared, if you like h1 squared plus the 10 squared on, on the base there. Now, h1 squared, what is h1 squared? Well, you know h1 is equal to the square root of 700. Uh, so hopefully we know that the h1 squared is just uh, root 700 squared. Okay, well, the square root of uh, uh, 700 squared. Okay, uh, squared, which is just uh, 700. Okay. So h1 squared okay, is 700. So we can just put this in. Uh, we know that h2 must equal okay, the square root of these. Uh, so h1 squared we know is 700. Uh, well, 10 squared is 100. Okay, so h2 is actually the square root of 800. Now, Okay, we can actually simplify this with our third laws uh, by taking out uh, something which we're going to go into 800. 
uh, I think 16 will go into it. Uh, there might be other, we might be able to break it down further, but I'm just going to leave it at the square root of 800 at the moment. So, what is the surface area? So, we're finally getting to the stage of the surface area, and uh, well, the surface area, what would it be? Well, let's have a quick look. The surface area would equal now four lots of those triangles. So, it's four times a half the base, the base is, uh, you can see here, 20 centimeters. It's supposed to be a square base of 20 centimetres, 20 centimetres, times the perpendicular height of the actual triangular face, which is H2, which is the square root of 800. And not forgetting to add on the uh, area of the base, okay, the base. So the base would be basically 20 times 20 for the base. Okay, so this is the base. Okay, these are the triangular faces, uh, which there are four. Okay, so we now have to just work out this. So let's just do put this into the calculator and try and work out what that turns out to be. Uh, well, it turns out to be a fairly large one fifteen hundred and thirty one point three seven centimeters squared. So when we actually do this, we end up getting that. Okay, the surface area. Okay, so so the surface area eventually, uh, adding the triangular faces and the base together, we end up getting fifteen thirty one point three seven. So 1531 .37, correct to two decimal places. And these would be, remember, the units, square units for surface area. Okay. So this is our surface area. Okay. So you can see here, that was quite a sophisticated example. You have to use uh, lots of triangles, and Pythagoras' result quite heavily. Okay, well, let's next now try and find the volume. Okay, uh, for all pyramids, the formula is one-third the area of the base times the perpendicular height. One-third A, where A is the area of the base, times the perpendicular height. Okay, so A, obviously, area base, and H is the perpendicular height. I'll just write perp height. Okay, so what things are we going to use? Well, um, actually, I must have rubbed out one of the 20s. Okay, over here. So we know that the actual uh, the base is square. Okay, it's a uh, 20 centimeter square. So we need the area of that, which is just 20 by 20, and we divide it by three and times it by the height. Now, what height are we going to use? Well, it's the perpendicular height. Okay, this one here. Okay, so we don't use the slant heights, if you like, of the actual triangular faces. We use them to find their areas. Okay, so so let's have a look. Let's put this in now to the volume formula and try and work out what that is. Okay, so the volume formula, okay, V is equal to one third the area of the base, which is, as you can see here, 20 times 20. And this has to be times by uh, the actual perpendicular height, which is actually the square root of 700. Okay, so we end up getting basically, what, uh, 400 on 3 times the square root of 700. Okay, uh, okay, so we just work this out on the calculator, and it works out to be about 3,527.67 centimeters cubed. Okay. That's to correct it two decimal places, 2dp. Okay, and these are, as you can see, centimeters cubed. This is the volume, right? So the units for volume are cubic units. Uh, and as you know, that every thousand cubic centimeters is a liter. So you could say that the, the capacity, if you like, of this uh, pyramid is about 3.5 liters. Actually, it's only a very approximate. But basically, that's its capacity. Okay, converting the volume to capacity by dividing by a thousand, obviously, just converts it to liters. Well, okay. Well, thank you for watching. This is uh, we are going to do a few more in the series of volume surface area.